2020 has definitely been a year that has been different for a lot of people. It's given me an opportunity to really kind of look at my organization and business and say, how can I improve upon my customer service, my interactions, and make sure that as I move forward, we do a better job of retention and outreach. Through this pandemic, I've been able to put together a CRM toolkit that I believe is gonna maximize my productivity and help you reach yours. So stay with me. If you guys are fans of the Key to Success planning system, you are gonna be a huge fan of this if you have any customer relations. I've talked to a number of business owners over the last year that have been investing in their growth and doing so through the planner. And a lot of the conversations that I've had with many individuals is about how they utilize the planner to grow their customers. It might be their customers' projects that they're working on. It might be the service and products that they have in their organization to help impact the output of what their customers can reach. At the end of the day, we all have customers and we're all working for them, no matter what organization or business you're in. Also, it doesn't matter what role you are in, at some point or another, you are communicating and connecting with someone that is a client of your organization. And throughout digital planning, I've learned that there's such huge importance to being able to make that commitment when you handwrite something in a note. I've also throughout the years, there's been so many times that I used to be a fan of using this guy, this laptop. But if I'm sitting there and I'm typing and talking to you and typing as I'm talking and you're talking and I'm typing and you're talking and I'm typing and I'm talking and you're typing and you're talking and I'm typing, I'm talking and you're typing. What happens is there's this wall, this barrier, this disconnect that takes place. But if I'm sitting here and I'm following you through your office, through your workshop, and as you're talking, I'm taking notes. And as I'm talking, I'm re-emphasizing some of the notes that I've taken. It puts me in a position that allows us to look more invested in what it is that you have to offer. But how does that work when it comes to a customer relationship management? So many different business owners have told me that they can't get their sales teams and their different businesses committed to taking care of utilizing these resources like Zoho CRM or Salesforce because a lot of times we don't want to have that computer in front of us. We want to have a notepad or tablet as we work through the customer interaction. Well, with that being said, I thought why not make a customer relationship manager toolkit that is a part of the planner and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. I've been using it the last two and a half months and it's really changed my perspective on how I go out and outreach and communicate and it really puts in mind what my goals are when I'm working with the customers. So let's take a look. The first page that you're gonna see is this client board. We wanted to have this client profile and in there we had an account name, who our lead contact was, the address and location of the business, when was the first time we made contact with the customer, as well as the last time, and if there's been some type of result. Also, a little note section that gives us a little bit of space where we can write something about that customer business. The next thing I wanted to put, and this is something I'm whenever I'm talking to salespeople in my organization, I always ask them, what is your interest statement in the customer? Why are you interested in that customer? And if, the salesperson or the inside sales manager says, well, they have a big business. We wanna be able to capture some of their sales through our organization. That's the wrong type of interest in a customer. When you find that there is some type of true interest that you have with the customer, if it be you believe in their products and services, you believe in their leadership, the values that they stand for, and you wanna be a part of that, that is going to encourage and motivate you to want to be a partner of theirs. And I always want to identify why that is right here. And it reminds me as I'm going through the process with the customer, what that looks like. Through there, I developed six different containers that really takes me through the process of working with that customer. And the first one is prospecting. We have a customer, they're in front of us, and we want to get in front of them, okay? And I'm always looking for that in. How do I, maybe it's using LinkedIn or some type of social media tool. Maybe it's uh, networking through a chamber connection or a customer connection. I'm always prospecting about how I wanna connect with that customer. And more importantly, 
what products or services do, do I believe that they would be able to utilize that we offer? I want to be able to draw the line between our business and their business and how we're there to serve. Qualifying is such an important part of the process for me because when I understand what that customer needs and how our products and services could improve their business or organization, I find that my success rate in closing a deal or building a relationship dramatically improves. And I, if I do a good job of identifying and qualifying that customer, I always get further ahead in the process. The pitch. We've talked about the perfect pitch. We've talked about the elevator pitch. These are all different things that we do throughout our day, trying to network and grow our connections and our opportunities. But a lot of times we don't sit down and dial down what that pitch should look like. What are the things that I want to indicate with the customer that I want them to know? What things do I want them to walk away from? And it's easy to do that when you notate them on the pitch. Value proposition. When we look at value proposition is what is the value that your potential customer going to have in your products and services. And when you're able to firmly understand that and write that down, I talk about writing down so much because when you write something down, your mind is more likely to remember it. So by filling in these boxes, it gives you a better memory of why you are valuable to that customer. So if you're in a meeting or if you're being introduced to someone else in your organization, you can go back and identify why you are valuable to their organization. And then the why buy. What makes you different than the other opportunities that they have? For us, we are an opportunity for them as much as they are an opportunity for us. If not, it's not a good business serving relationship. So you have to be able to ask the question to them and be able to give them the answer about why you are the better buy. And again, writing that down is huge. But through every process, we're going to have some type of objectives. It could be a financial objective. It could be they're in a current contract or they have a, a current relationship. We want to always identify those, and this is a place to do that. And what I love about this whole client board is right here on this first page spread, it really helps you identify who is your customer, who is your contact, why you are interested in them, and how you're going to go through the sales process and what things you're going to do to help validate that you are a good partner. It's right here, and it's in front of you at every given time that you are going to connect to that customer. The right side of this panel is really about the process in which you're going to do it. Whenever I start to think about a customer relationship, especially a new one, I want to think about how I'm going to build some type of relationship with them. And using the success sketch is the place to do it in. This is the area where you can brainstorm, build a relationship, and map out how you are going to connect your products and services with the customers. It's also a spot where you can kind of identify some type of timeline. It might be a place where you show the connections that you have with customers that they're connected with. It's a great space to kind of just put your thoughts down on paper as you validate why they are a good customer for you and you are a good partner for them. Milestones, I always say as much as you are interested in achieving success, where does success begin? Does it begin in the first meeting or when you close the deal? Or is it throughout the process? And I think any good salesperson would tell you, anybody in customer relationship, you get that feeling of excitement when you start to see the relationship grow. I encourage everyone to set goals and map that out as key milestones in the journey so that you can indicate, I got my first meeting. I was able to provide a proposal. I was able to do a product demonstration. These are all milestones and getting you down a road. So that way, if you have to report to maybe your boss or another person in your organization, or maybe for one reason or another, you're gonna bring in another colleague into the conversation, you can clearly identify with them some of the milestones you already had and what came of those. The last section is always just a great spot to have some type of notes uh, to indicate with the customer. And you can easily go through and put those pieces into play and write notes and update those each and every time you meet with a customer. And as your relationship grows, you can constantly build on the content that's on this page. This is your landing page for your customer management. And why I like it is because if I am have my planner and I'm carrying with me wherever I go, this tool is with me now wherever I go and it's in the same notebook, I can easily jump into it and make these updates as I have my different meetings. But it goes beyond that. We indicated that every 
customer needs to have some type of long-term call activity. Now calls, as you see from our daily planning pages, it's on every single page. I talk a lot about the importance of having calls and creating opportunities. And this is gonna help you track that success long-term. These pages are, you can copy throughout the planner and continue to grow, but this is a space where you can indicate the customer call log. You can showcase, you know, was it an email? Was it a call? Calls can be in person, they can be over the phone, they can be a meeting of some sort, but it's some type of interaction. You can indicate the date and time. What came out of that call? What was the purpose? What was the results? Was there any type of follow-up or tasks that were generated that you need to do? And then again, when should you follow up with that customer? And this page allows you to have basically the next 12 interactions on this page so you can go ahead and map your success with that customer. And one thing I want you guys to just stop for a second and think about this thought and put it in your own perspective. Do you know 85% of salespeople stop calling on a customer by the fifth call? Did you know that 85% of customers will commit to an opportunity by the sixth call? Are you one of those individuals that does not keep an accurate call log, set milestones, that you essentially stop your investment because you lost interest in that customer by the fifth call? Nine out of 10 times they would tell you if you would make one more call, 85% of customers are gonna close on the opportunity that you're presenting to them. And that to me was such an important piece of this page. Now you can use all our templates to expand on this. You can add the vision board as part of this process. You can add additional note pages. You can add different sketches to this client log. The idea with these two pages, it's a space as you can see, I have my prospects, I have my customers, and I have all my planning activities lined out right here so that as I'm going through my daily tasks, if I'm going from meeting to meeting, from my vehicle to the office, I'm quickly able to indicate and track my success and write down the interactions that I have. And if you are someone that has Salesforce or some type of other CRM, you can easily go back at the end of the day, hop on your computer, use these notes to dictate your interactions. You as as maybe a possible employer or a sales manager, if your staff is using this and your sales staff is committed to this, then being able to take notes in the field and go back to the office and then regurgitate the conversations that they had and put them into your digital computer CRM is gonna make for a stronger result. This is a great supplement to those that already have a CRM program. It's a great addition to those that aren't doing much of anything with their customer management. I'm Brandon Bonderfer, the founder and creator of the Key to Success Planning System, and everything that we've been doing over the last few years is about growing awareness for our vision, for our goals, and being able to put that into a clean format that you, as an inspiring individual, can utilize each and every day by focusing on your key goals, if it be with your customers, if it be with your work, if it be with your spiritual growth, if it be with your health and fitness. We're doing that through this plan and we're making ourselves accountable. If you're not a follower already, guys, now's the time. Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, get notified because we'll continue to do videos that showcases how you use these products to better your life, find more success, I'm Brandon Bonifer, founder and creator, and I'll see you guys in the next video.